Hello and welcome to Racers Now. It's just five weeks now until the 1,000 guineas at Newmarket on Sunday, May the 5th. And updates are coming thick and fast as the flat season gets going. Stables are now up and running and the trainers and connections are giving updates on potential running plans with the first classic of the season, first Phillies classic of the season in mind. We covered in our latest anti-post video on the 1,000 guineas that opera singer is out and my fancy at this stage and remains the case. See the fire is now 14 to 1 from around 20 to 1 when I first put it up. Still like it. No specific update on that horse, which I'm at this, at this stage of the season, sometimes it is no news is good news. And as I've said always, it looks very, very open at this stage. And the betting suggests that 7 to 2, Yelang Yelang, 4 to 1 ish, Fallen Angel, and obviously bigger prices, the rest wide open, particularly in comparison to the 2,000 guineas equivalent on the previous uh, day, the Saturday, the 4th of May. So on this video, we're going to look at some of the those uh, bigger prices or contenders that we've not quite looked at to this stage. And I think a good place to start is last season's Osho Sharp Stakes, the Group 3 at Newmarket in October last year, where the 1-2 are very much at this stage intended runners in the 1,000 guineas in about five weeks' time. Godolphin's dance sequence won that race and Judmont's Skelet was second both ran very different races in the Osho Sharp Stakes. If you go back and watch that, Skelly on the front end, probably a reluctant leader under Ryan Moore that day. Won't be under Ryan Moore come the Guineas itself. And battling well, beating a neck eventually was Skelly. And dance sequence under William Buick, out the back, weaving through traffic late on and getting up in the final strides in authoritative fashion, let's be fair. That's twice in two starts that dance sequence has come from last to first. And you would have to think that that, might not be able to get away with that in the 1,000 guineas itself with potentially more runners and, of course, higher quality, it being a Group 1. Dance sequencer season was somewhat either disjointed through potential setbacks that we don't know about or very safety first from Charlie Appleby, one of the two, in my opinion. She won on her debut on July the 1st, then had 104 days off at the height of the summer and not seen again until that oh-so-sharp stakes and put away for the season altogether after that race. So two starts, two wins. She's likely to need and want her trainer to uh, go maybe in a trial at the Craven meeting. And that's where you will probably see Dan Sequence turning up next. Skelet, meanwhile, was started quite late as a two-year-old. 4th of August was her debut, finishing fourth on that occasion. Then got ahead in front, um, beating a subsequent uh, Richard Hannon trained winner um, just two weeks later on her second start. That was a, a maiden win there. And then a very, very rare purchase mid-season by Judmon of a horse in training. I've, I can't remember this ever happening in the time that I've been following racing that Judmont, you know, usually they're breeders, obviously will buy some at the at the main sales, but mainly breeders of horses. They've got obviously the likes of Frankel, um, Kingman, etc. in their breeding operation. And to buy a horse, particularly a female, mid-season after two starts and ahead of that group three at Newmarket, I thought that was really noteworthy. Um, to take note of that, originally owned by the Rogers family and snapped up by Judmont in early October before running in that oh so short by Kingman. So you can see why they've done it. That's one of their um, leading sires at Judmont. So you can see why they've done it, but it's definitely unusual and worth taking note of. Skelly is due to have a race course gallop before going straight to the Guineas. So we're unlikely to see her in a race before the Guineas and go and go straight there. Maybe one for another video, but race course gallops should be banned but we'll leave that for another time. The final point on the Oso Sharp Stakes was uh, Sheik Columbine, who was well over three lengths behind Dan Sequence and Skellit that day in third, has already been out this season and absolutely wazzed up in a French listed race already in March this year. Um, I mean, although Sheik Columbine is actually not entered in the 1,000 guineas at all at the moment and unlikely to be so, uh, George Bowie trains it. Looked a soft, soft enough race in France where she won, but w winning nonetheless by over five lengths. So the form of that Oso oh Sharp Stakes is already looking decent. Dance sequence is currently eight to one. Skelet is much, much bigger at thirty-three to one as we speak. I don't think there is there should be such discrepancy between those two in in the market. But as well as Skelet, Judman also have another potential contender in the beautifully bred indelible. Uh, two starts at the back end of last year, latterly winning a maiden at Lingfield. Could run in a trial. We'll probably need to run in a trial. She's only had two starts. 
but well worth um, a look in the Guineas lineup. If she was to go well or even win one of the trials, she'll definitely be a contender. Currently 66 to 1, which as she's only had two starts in novice races is obviously about right. Another of the race course gallop brigade, and yes, they should be banned, is Fallen Angel for Carl Burke who we have already covered on the channel, but now finds herself battling for anti-post favouritism as a result of Opera Singer no longer being in the market. A uh, winner of the Group 1 Moyglear Stud Stakes at two last year over in Ireland, and that was her final start of the year, but I don't think that form is up to much. Remember, Ylang Ylang went off favourite that day and was pretty awful. She did bounce back, but in that um, the race in question, the Moyglear Stud, she was pretty awful and Fallen Angel kind of fell in a lap a little bit but look she's a group one winner at two trained by Carl Burke nicely bred as well so fair enough she's um she does look a three-year-old sort to be fair a very likely runner at this stage but unfortunately going to be going in a race course gallop so we are not going to learn anything about Fallen Angel or the likes of Skellit with these blooming race course gallops between now and the day itself um yeah shouldn't be happening in my opinion Porter Fortuna was another for Donica O'Brien. This time, uh, not Aiden, but Donica um, had a productive 2023, to say the very least. Um, but looked at an out-and-out -out two-year-old to me, in my opinion. She had seven starts as a two-year-old, this Porter Fortuna. Uh, four wins, including in the Albany at Royal Ascot and the Group 1 Cheveley Park Stakes, over six furlongs at Newmarket. She then went on to the Breeders' Cup, where she ran with credit as well. Very busy as a two-year-old, got American owners, I believe, as well. So she um, should be, with that backstory, with that form, should be taken seriously for the 1,000 guineas, but wouldn't be for me. She loves fast ground and could go, another one that could go straight to Newmarket if the Leopardstown trial comes up soft. Porta Fortuna at the moment, 20 to 1. A, she looks more of a two-year-old to me, and B, probably more of a sprinter in time, looking at maybe six furlongs and the Commonwealth Cup later in the year. Another one from over in Ireland that we've mentioned before, but worth mentioning again, one look. Um, she was mentioned on our first video a couple of weeks ago, the Goffs Million winner on debut in Ireland. Wildly impressive that day. Um, she's the one... Um, the only semi-serious Guineas hope at this time that we've seen on the track. Although it was basically a piece of work at Cork on March the 30th. This one look was 1 to 20 on heavy ground and actually a median auction race. Um, so, yeah, really yeah, under the radar, barely off the bridle. We learned nothing in fairness. Um, this one look won €610,000 on debut and then on a second start won €12,980. Um, so, yeah. A very quite interesting way that she's been, been campaigned so far. She's still in the box of could be absolutely anything. Um, and unsurprisingly, unchanged, given that win at 1-20 to 20 at Cork. She's around 14-1 to 1 for the 1,000 guineas at Newmarket. And a trainer, Paddy Twomey, has very much said if they go to Newmarket, not definitely when. So if she does, she's a fascinating runner. But at the moment, she's priced up that she may or may not be a runner. But definitely a horse to look forward to this season. One look. We learnt nothing about her on her second start. But her first start was wildly impressive. One of the biggest takeouts of last season, in my opinion. I did say a few weeks ago that the wide open nature of the 1,000 guineas from an anti-post perspective at the moment. And again, we're five weeks and out, away now. Not far. The trials are, you know, um, the week after the Grand National around the um, 16th, 17th and 20th of April. So we're really going to be coming thick and fast. The market's going to be changing as and when horses come out and win these trials, look impressive, disappointing in these trials, whatever it may be. But it is wide open and that, I think, opens the door for French runners. It's been a while since they, the French have given either New Market Guineas a proper go. I mean, they've won this race before. They've won the 2,000 Guineas with McPhee. They've won the 1,000 Guineas with Miss France. But not in the last few years have we seen French runners coming over. They basically just haven't had the quality. But last year was a bit of a turning point for French racing. They won quite a few of their um, Group 1s on home soil. And in the last maybe four or five years, they've basically been farmed by British and Irish trainers. And, um, yeah, we've seen um, a horse for the 1,000 guineas being cut um, in the last week or so, and that is Ramat UL. Um, I think I did mention her a few weeks ago as a potential French contender, but we just don't know if they're going to run. Well, the market being cut from 16 to 1 into 12, not a massive move, but that maybe does give an idea that she may well run uh, or be may maybe a, a potential runner over at Newmarket in the first weekend of May. And this Ramat UL, um, by sire of the moment, justify. She won a Group 3 and a Group 2 on home soil last year. Decent enough races. The Group 2 by four lengths. That was against the boys. Her Majesty was second that day, a horse of Aidan O'Brien's that 
wasn't out the top drawer of Aidan O'Brien juveniles, but I think it was um, significant that this rematch well was was running against the boys on more than one occasion actually last year. Um, a best form was in the Group One pre Mornay against the boys again. Um, something very few of these other contenders in this race have done. Uh, racing against the opposite sex as two year olds. Um, often you see fillies uh, in the UK and Ireland race solely against their own sex at two and three. Now, this Rematuel has already tried her hand against the the opposite sex as well. So I think that's pretty significant. And in that group one, Mornay, I mean, she was a short neck second behind Van Dijk, could hardly have been any closer. And in front that day of the Ribber Tiber and Sacred Angel, both went on to prove genuine group one form without winning, but group one form later in the season thereafter. Um, I think they were both, they were the Fallen Angel and Ribber Tiber were in the top four in the... Um, in the Middle Park Stakes, a race that Van Dijk went on to win. So solid form of that pre mornay Van Dijk, very, very impressive, as we know. But this uh, Rematuel is sure to get a one-mile trip, despite not racing over any further than six furlongs to this point in her career. But she is bred to definitely be wanting and getting a mile in time. You would hope that could be in the Guineas itself. And so far, Christopher Head has shown a great willingness to travel his horses in his young training career thus far. Um, Big Rock came over and won on Champions Day last year. Um, he had the runner, the favourite that ended up disappointing over at Goodwood, the Nassau Stakes, uh, Blue Rose Sen. So he is he is definitely uh, not averse to bringing horses over. And with a, with a family like he comes from, Christopher Head, um, you wouldn't put anything anything past him at this stage. And with Opera Singer out, as we've mentioned a few times, Romatuel, he's actually the best horse in the race, according to Racing Post ratings at this time. And I know we're dealing with a lot of horses that could improve and ha we haven't seen a whole lot of so far. So they are only a guide at this stage. But the pure facts are, Romatuel at this stage is the highest rated horse potentially to run in the 1,000 guineas, uh, according to Racing Post ratings, off 122. So let's hope that horses like One Look, who's very exciting and unexposed, Romatuel, who's possibly got the best form of any contender at this stage coming over from France. Let's hope they run to make it a cracking race at Newmarket in early May. So what's the conclusion, you may ask? Well, I'm against your Lang Yilang Lang and Fallen Angel at the prices. I don't think Fallen Angel's form is good enough, quite frankly, but she does look like a three-year-old and obviously could run well. But I'm happy to take her on. And your Lang, Lang, let's remember, she blew out a couple of times last year, particularly in that Moy Glare stud stakes. Um, and then over at Newmarket, she came over from at Newmarket after that, before winning the Phillies Mile and disappointed there as well. When favourite did go on to win the Phillies Mile, which is, you know, normally a very, very good guide to a 1,000 Guineas contender. But Aidan O'Brien on his stable tour and doing his press rounds last week was something along the lines of, um, the question was, would Ryan Moore have a difficult choice to make between Opera Singer and Yelang Yelang if they were running in the same race, for argument's sake? And Aidan answered pretty quickly and pretty uh, strongly and sternly that no, the answer to that question is no, Opera Singer is some way clear of Yelang Yelang. And that's enough for me to open the door to um, looking at having a bet in the 1,000 Guineas. I'm currently on See the Fire at 20 to 1. She's 14 to 1 now. I wouldn't mass massively put you off that, to be fair, but she's not... I can see See the Fire possibly going straight to the Guineas. Hopefully, we do get to see her in a trial, but possibly going straight to the Guineas, and she'll be about the same price as she is now anyway, really, in my opinion. But I am convinced that something will come out of the woodwork in the coming weeks in a trial, but I'm not sure what it is at this stage, and that's all part of the game anti-post. There's plenty to look forward to as the trials get underway, as the form of the stables, and we start hearing more quotes about the main contenders. But I'm happy to take on the top of the market at the moment, and I do like See the Fire. And I think others maybe could be overpriced as well, like the likes of Skelly. And we're going to see, hopefully, dance sequence, maybe stamp authority in a trial. So plenty to look forward to. And of course, we'll have all of the big anti-post racers covered here on Racers Now. The Derby's coming up as well. We're looking towards the Guineas early doors as well. So thanks for watching and make sure you keep it here on Racers Now. <laughs>